I'm Dr. Brian Scottco. I'm a medical geneticist and the Emma Campbell Endowed Chair on Down Syndrome at Massachusetts General Hospital. And these are Mass General Brigham's answers to the most commonly searched questions on Down Syndrome. Why is it called Down Syndrome? Down Syndrome is named after Dr. John Langdon Down, a British physician who was the first to describe the characteristics of people with Down Syndrome. Little known fact, after Dr. Down passed away, his own son had a child with Down Syndrome named after his grandfather. What causes Down Syndrome? Down Syndrome occurs when a person has extra material from chromosome 21. In a neurotypically developing person, a person has 23 pairs of chromosomes, 2 times 23, or 46 chromosomes. Those pairs are numbered 1, 2, 3, and subsequently. Someone with Down syndrome in chromosome 21, rather than having two copies, has three copies of chromosome 21 in the most common form of Down syndrome called trisomy 21. So people with trisomy 21 have an extra chromosome, or 46 plus 1, or 47 chromosomes in every cell in their body. Another genetic type of Down syndrome is called translocation Down syndrome. This is where that extra copy of chromosome 21 is attached to another chromosome, like chromosome 13, 14, or 15. Essentially, the body still sees and recognizes three copies of chromosome 21, and an individual with translocation Down syndrome has indistinguishable characteristics as someone with trisomy 21. People with translocation Down syndrome, however, could sometimes inherit it or pass this along within the family. A third type of Down syndrome is called mosaic Down syndrome. This is where some cells, but not all cells, have that extra chromosome. And depending on which cells and how many cells have that extra chromosome can determine how many characteristics a person might have of Down syndrome in general. How can you tell someone has Down syndrome? People with Down syndrome have certain characteristics that allow them to be distinguished. Babies with Down syndrome tend to have eyes that are upward slanting. Children with Down syndrome, their nasal bridge will be a little bit depressed. People with Down syndrome oftentimes will have lower set ears, shorter fingers, and oftentimes there is a wider gap between the first and second digits of their toes. It's important to note that these are characteristics. These in and of themselves are not medical problems, but they're some of the features that allow us to distinguish whether or not someone might be born with Down syndrome. Can Down syndrome be treated? While we are not able to take away that extra chromosome in someone with Down syndrome, many of the co-occurring conditions that go along with Down syndrome can be anticipated, prevented, and even treated. So for example, while Down syndrome genetically in and of itself cannot be changed, we know some of the co-occurring conditions like thyroid disease can be anticipated and treated. For example, if someone with Down syndrome does have abnormal thyroid levels, we could give more medicine in order to make them thyroid or have their thyroid be at the perfect stage. We also know people with Down syndrome can develop other co-occurring conditions, but thanks to advances in medicine and technology, we now have a medical playbook or medical guidelines to make sure we can anticipate some of those conditions when they occur. Some people with Down syndrome could also develop something called celiac disease. That's when they ingest certain foods that contain gluten, their body could react. We have a test to be able to anticipate that, and when people with Down syndrome have celiac disease, we have 100% treatment by eliminating gluten from their diet. It's important to note that people with Down syndrome should work closely with their medical providers, again, to make sure they're up to date on all the recommendations that are intended to keep them healthy, safe, and well. What are some of the most common co-occurring conditions that go along with Down syndrome? While we have a medical playbook to keep people with Down syndrome healthy, not everyone with Down syndrome develops all of these conditions and everyone is unique. But some of the common co-occurring conditions in people with Down syndrome include obstructive sleep apnea. This is where someone is sleeping at night but they're not getting a sufficient amount of oxygen to keep their brain healthy. So we're oftentimes screening people with Down syndrome to see if they snore or have any nighttime symptoms. People with Down syndrome can oftentimes have changes in their vision or their hearing. But by seeing an eye doctor and a hearing doctor on a regular basis, we could address those. For example, eyeglasses for any vision changes or ear tubes for any conductive hearing loss. Nearly everyone with Down syndrome has an intellectual disability. But people with Down syndrome can and do continue to learn. They are lifelong learners, so long as we give them the resources, support, and the infrastructure to help them succeed. 
we want to make sure that some of the co-occurring health conditions don't get in the way for people with Down syndrome leading a healthy and well life. This is why at Mass General Brigham, we've created Down Syndrome Clinic to you. This is an online virtual platform where we are coming to you so you don't have to come to us. By entering your questions, the symptoms, the concerns about your loved one with Down syndrome, you will get automated answers and recommendations to make sure they're up to date on all the health and wellness tips that are available for people with Down syndrome. And even better, you will also get a checklist to take to their local doctor, their pediatrician or internal medicine physician. So we could turn them into a Down syndrome specialist as well. Together with Down syndrome clinic to you, we aim to democratize healthcare so everyone with Down syndrome gets access to the best and most up-to-date healthcare that exists. Does Down syndrome occur equally in all racial and ethnic groups? Yes, Down syndrome is believed to occur equally at the same frequency in fetuses of all different racial and ethnic backgrounds. Does Down syndrome occur equally in males and females? Technically, Down syndrome occurs in slightly more males than females, but we have lots of males and females with Down syndrome in the United States and around the world. How many people with Down syndrome are there in the world? Based on the most recent data, there are more than 214,000 people with Down syndrome in the United States. In Europe, we estimate there are more than 420,000 individuals with Down syndrome, and the best estimates are there are nearly 7 million people with Down syndrome around the world. What is the current life expectancy for someone with Down syndrome in the United States? The average lifespan of someone with Down syndrome now nearly approaches 60 years of age. Thanks to advances in medicine and technology, I think the best is yet to come for people with Down syndrome. Research is continuing to uncover new answers to the mysteries that we still have for people with Down syndrome. I would anticipate the life expectancy would continue to expand. What is it like to be a parent of someone with Down syndrome? Many parents could recall the first moments when they received that diagnosis of Down syndrome for their child. And oftentimes it's a moment filled with shock, anger, and being upset. And those are normal emotions to experience. But 99% of parents go on to say that they incredibly love their child with Down syndrome. And that is because believing in their child leads to incredible promise and expectations. People with Down syndrome continue to show that they can be healthy and well with the guidance of their physicians. People with Down syndrome continue to be successful in classrooms with the right support. And people with Down syndrome go on to employment and other good social activities in their lifetime. Parents say that when they step aside and follow their child with Down syndrome and remove limitations and replace them with expectations, that's when the fun begins. What is it like to be a sibling of someone with Down syndrome? My colleagues and I have had an opportunity to survey brothers and sisters who have siblings with Down syndrome, and 88% of brothers and sisters say that they're distinctly better people because they have a loved one with Down syndrome. Yes. Having a sibling is going to have all the emotions of at times you're aggravated, at times you're angry, but overall, the overall positive emotions far outweigh the negative emotions when it comes to having a sibling with Down syndrome. People with Down syndrome teach their brothers and sisters all sorts of life lessons. I know, I have a sister with Down syndrome who has taught me important life lessons. She continues to shape who I am and why I decided to be a physician in the first place and many brothers and sisters oftentimes will choose professions that are related to that caregiving experience. What is it like to have Down syndrome? People with Down syndrome continue to respond in research and in surveys that they love their lives, they like how they look, and they really enjoy all the aspects of their life. People with Down syndrome might have some medical issues, but thanks to advances in medicine, their physicians are helping to treat and prevent some of those issues. This allows people with Down syndrome to succeed in classrooms. People with Down syndrome, of course, to be great family members, brothers and sisters, nieces and nephews. People with Down syndrome are graduating from school and becoming great employees. And people with Down syndrome, like their counterparts, enter into all different romantic relationships that are meaningful and important to them. In sum, people with Down syndrome have declared loud and clear they love their lives, which are full of meaning and worth. What does it mean to live with Down syndrome today? There has never been a better moment than now 
to be born with Down syndrome because medicine and science continues to advance to address, prevent, and anticipate many of the medical needs. And people with Down syndrome now have access to a variety of living arrangements after they become adults. People with Down syndrome have a right to be educated with their neurotypically developing peers. And the majority of time that leads to wonderful friendships and wonderful appreciations. But sometimes there is teasing from those who often don't get it. But this is why it's so important to have diversity training in our schools and disability awareness training in our schools. We know that people with Down syndrome continue to teach others as much as they learn from others. And study after study shows that by having a classmate with a difference like Down syndrome makes you a smarter and a better classmate. I am so proud that as a nation, we are continuing to address head on the effects of teasing and bullying. While the science hasn't changed, while the genetics hasn't changed, we as a society are continuing to change to accept and include and value people with Down syndrome. There's still room to go. And if you haven't met someone with Down syndrome, now is the time to do so. Thanks for joining me today. I'm Dr. Brian Scacco at Mass General Brigham. For more information about the different genetic types of Down syndrome in English and Spanish, check the resources below.